Elsewhere, the UN Security Council has announced a meeting to discuss the situation in the flashpoint Syrian city of Aleppo. The meeting was requested by the United States, Britain, and France. Fighting has escalated to the northern city in the past few days. On Saturday, intense air raids on militant-held parts of the city left dozens wound. Uh, dead water has been cut to over 2 million Aleppo residents in both government-controlled and militant-held parts of the city. A week-long ceasefire brokered by the U.S. and Russia ended on Monday with Moscow holding terrorists and the U.S.-led coalition responsible for breaching the truce. But Washington and its European allies say it's up to Russia to save the peace deal and take extraordinary steps to salvage diplomatic efforts. Publisher and editor of Politics First, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos, joins us now from the British capital, London. Sir, welcome to the program. Uh, given the uh, events that took place over the past uh, fortnight, I think it's safe to say that the situation in Aleppo is more convoluted than ever. Regret regrettably, I'd have to agree with you. The British and American accusations uh, against Russia in the context of the ceasefire are uncorroborated, they are deceitful, they are politically motivated, they are an attempt to turn world opinion against Russia, and they are a, an attempt by the Americans and the British to gain the upper hand uh, in Syria. We know very, very well that the uh, ceasefire, which was largely brought about through Russian efforts, was on the one hand uh, adhered to, observed by the Syrian army, but on the other hand, um, was not uh, observed by the numerous terrorist groups um, in Syria. The terrorist groups used the ceasefire as an opportunity to regroup, rearm, and to plan uh, new attacks against uh, the Syrian army. And the, uh, the lethal blow to that ceasefire was the American massacre of 60 or so Syrian soldiers in Deir Ezzor. And that, that effectively killed uh, the ceasefire. But then uh, 24 hours or so after that terrible tragedy, um, there is a convenient uh, strike on an air convoy. Now, uh, I say convenient uh, because there hasn't been a proper investigation into that. The Americans and the British, uh, almost immediately after the, uh, the strike on the convoy, knew, and I say knew in inverted commas, that the Russians had done it. And so the Americans and the British used that uh, as a pretext uh, to blame Russia for the end of the ceasefire and to almost uh, enhance uh, the position of the various terrorist groups uh, they are back in in, uh, in northern Syria. And not, what we see now is that the Syrian army, once again, is going on the offensive. And for people watching this interview, let me make it very clear. That is absolutely right. That is absolutely acceptable that the Syrian army is going on the offensive in Aleppo. The Syrian army is attempting to liberate Aleppo not uh, tighten its noose or tighten its grip, as Western journalists are referring to. No, to liberate Aleppo from Islamist terrorists, Islamist terrorists who are being backed by the Americans, the British, the Turks, the Saudis, and the Qataris. And it is no different to a hypothetical situation in Britain where a British city has become occupied by Islamist terrorists and the British army is going on the offensive to liberate it. And let's talk about uh, the uh, meeting that has been discussed by the, uh, that has been announced by the UN Security Council. It's been requested by the US, Britain, and France. What uh, uh, is to become of it? What can be the result of such a meeting at this point in time? Well, it's inevitable that there's going to be no consensus um, amongst, the, uh, amongst the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Um, uh, the Americans uh, and the British, in particular, and also the French, uh, they have called this. Uh, they have called this meeting once again for political motives. Once again, to uh, continue the demonization um, of Russia. And uh, you know, the British and the Americans at the United Nations Security uh, Council, it really should be put to them that they were never committed to the ceasefire in the first place. You know, the, ce the, the end of the ceasefire actually benefits uh, the Americans in particular because the Americans uh, 
they, they, it's very important for the Americans to maintain their presence in northern Syria. And how is the American presence in northern Syria, uh, or what is the American presence in northern Syria? Well, the numerous terrorist groups, Islamist terrorist groups in that part of Syria, and also the presence of the Turkish uh, military. So, um, uh, you know, there will be, of course, a meeting at the United Nations Security Council. Nothing will come of it apart from the usual slanderous uh, uncorroborated accusations against Russia. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the terrorist groups in Syria will keep on receiving arms uh, from the Americans, from the Turks, uh, from the Saudis, as indeed one of their terrorist leaders said less than 24 hours ago. And so it gives me no pleasure to say that the only way the conflict in Syria will end is going to be on the battlefield. Um, and I am confident uh, that the Syrian military, together with its Russian allies, with its Iranian allies and its Hezbollah, Hezbollah allies, um, will sooner or later defeat the terrorists uh, in Syria. And if the Americans and the British and the Turks and the Saudis are really committed to a peaceful uh, solution, a political solution to the conflict in Syria, then they should stop arming the terrorists, period. Thank you, Sir Publish and Editor of Politics First, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos, joining us from London.